Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. Due to popular request and demand, I am doing an analyzation of Tati's apology, maybe explanation video. If this video gets 1500 likes or more, I'll do Shane's video as well. That just lets me know that this is a series that people are interested in. Now, on top of this, I went ahead and analyzed her full video before, all 40 minutes of it. And because of that, my video ended up being an hour and 20 minutes long, which I feel like is a little too long for anybody to be appreciative of. I'm just going to go ahead and analyze the shortened version today and use the information that I got from the original large version before in today's analyzation. I hope this makes sense and uh, let's go ahead and start here. In this, I'm trying to not dive into the backstory of all of this as much as possible because that allows for me to be able to approach things unbiasedly. It's not that I don't care to dive into it, it's that I don't want to begin weighting my own opinions before I see anything, if that makes sense to you. Nonverbal communication relies on something known as baselines. That's where a person's nonverbal state is at rest or at its most comfortable. So when there isn't any strain or tenseness involved, that is where their baseline lies. So I was able to establish that from the full 40 minute length video. And so I'll be relying off of that baseline for these tells in this video. Also, there are no universal tells of deceit in nonverbal communication. That's a very common misconception. So what I'm giving you today is just an educated opinion as to what's going on. It shouldn't be used for anything beyond that. It's just an educated opinion. I think that's enough of the disclaimers though. Let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to be watching this all on my phone. So that's, that's what I'm looking at here. I am going to be reading uh, from what is approved by my legal team. So I am, once I start getting into what I need to share with you guys today, what I feel is important to share with you, I won't be deviating. And it's um, at the advice of my legal counsels. Also, by the way, these are my words. I did write this and this is from my heart, but I am being careful here. And I think you guys understand why. Okay, so right off the bat, when you're reading something to somebody that makes it to where your nonverbal communication is no longer as reliable as if it were just being spoken. So scripting this is something that her legal team told her to do. And that makes sense because that allows her to not accidentally go off on a tangent, but that's going to make a nonverbal read more difficult. That being said, when she says, I wrote this all myself, these are my words, blah, blah, blah. If you watch her nonverbal communication during that, it has a little bit of snarkiness to it. You can see that with her lopsided smirk almost, and then also shaking her head, blinking, things like that. These are all what would be referred to as positive spikes in her nonverbal communication. Not that it's a beneficial spike, it's that there was no action before now there's action she didn't have any head shakes before this and she didn't blink her eyes a lot before this and doing that in this situation just raises a red flag as to the authenticity of what she's saying so chances are in my opinion once again this is just in my opinion she wrote this yes but i believe it's probably been heavily edited by her legal team she might not be speaking from the heart so on and so forth that's just what i see from this initial part here let's go ahead and continue from there Back in December 2019, after Shane and Jeffrey's series ended, James Charles came to my LA home and we compared DMs, texts, and stories about what had happened behind the scenes. We apologized to each other, forgave each other, and agreed to wait patiently until it was safe for me to share my story. All right, so as I just said, this is making it difficult to get a real nonverbal read because she's very clearly reading. But here's something that I will say. I went ahead as I analyzed the 40 minute video of all of this, something that stuck out to me right off at the beginning of the initial video, which you can go and watch it yourself, is that she's immediately flung into emotion on things that aren't highly emotional points, which can be an indicator of 
manipulation, emotional manipulation. The crocodile tears thing is the quote that goes along with this. So that was something that I've been keeping in mind as I watched this. Now, she's not showing much emotion in this area, and there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be a lot of emotion. She's just talking about how they forgave each other. But we'll see how this specific abbreviated version goes. I do know that as I watched the full version, I got the feeling of her being overly emotive, what you would refer to as fake crying here and there, or forced crying or forced emotion. So let's go ahead and keep watching this. Since that night, James Charles has repeatedly said that he wanted to be beside me for this video. Okay, well, well that was a weird, weird little blip. So around that, she does get a little bit more emotional in that situation to where it's showing that she's getting choked up on stuff, which it seems genuine. So during nonverbal reading, just as a quick crash course for you, during nonverbal reading, you're not looking for signs of deceit. You're looking for signs of misalignment or desynchronization between the nonverbal and the verbal. And this can be done in a couple different ways. First is if somebody is speaking of something that is say, for instance, sad, but their face isn't reflecting that either it's completely expressionless or it's expressing another emotion, then that is a point of desynchronization. And that doesn't mean deceit. That just means that there is extra psychological processing going on. Along with that, whenever a person is talking, their gestures will often flow. And what I mean by that is that the words will flow as they're saying it with sentences, phrases, so on and so forth. And the gestures will match up with that. As you can see, even with my hand here, it's moving with the words that I'm using. This is usually either done one by being completely genuine or it's done by somebody who's trained to be able to speak, so on and so forth. But those two points are areas that you can find desynchronization. And if you see this, you should start keeping your eye out for other contradictions in story, contradictions in body language, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and continue on from there. Prior to the scandal last May, I'd started growing frustrated with what I perceived as a progressing sense of entitlement. And I felt that he was making some detrimental choices that could jeopardize his career and safety. None of my concerns became overwhelming until after I met Shane Dawson. While I was definitely upset that he had accepted a sponsorship from the biggest rival to my brand, Halo Beauty, I did not make my video because of vitamins. I made it as a result of all of the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. The information they were giving me was terrifying. I thought your career and freedom were in jeopardy. I was trying to get you to put your phone down and seek help because I was told there were a lot of victims that were going to come forward to destroy you. Okay, so this is something that she did in the full video, which once again, you should reference the full video as I do this analysis. I'm literally just doing this shortened version because I feel like you don't want to watch an hour and 20 minute version. But during this, she starts to be able to paint herself as a victim. And this is a verbal thing. This is no longer a nonverbal thing, but it is a manipulation technique, which I feel like I should bring up. So she begins to paint herself out as the victim. Yes, it is possible to be deceived by people, but her nonverbal communication during it betrayed a lot of self-doubt in various mouth shrugs, shaking of heads, eye blocking, so on and so forth. These things that you would expect to see in somebody who's insecure in and of themselves during these sorts of statements. So it led me to believe that she didn't necessarily believe herself to actually be that victim that she painted herself out to be as much as she painted herself out to be it. She was probably manipulated by people, but not to the extent that she's portraying. Once again, in the main video, there are a lot more emotional points. Uh, for instance, her apology to James was a genuine apology, perhaps a little oversaturated, so to speak, on the emotional side of things, but it was genuine. Everything seemed to be lining up. Everything flowed well. She wasn't trying to say something that she didn't mean, if that makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and look at this one, and it's Jackie Ina, I think is her name. I don't know who this is. I had never heard the name before actually watching these videos. So whoever Jackie is, Tati's about to apologize and we'll see how that flows here real quick. Jackie Ina. The moment that Jeffrey went off on you, the day before my first video collab with him went live, I should have run for the hills. I was naive. I was excited about the video. I got it twisted that you had provoked Jeffrey because you were angry that I had filmed with someone who had a history of being labeled by others as a racist. 
Jackie, I'm sorry that I did not do the right thing and walk away from him then. I should have not been blind to the reasons behind the accusations of his racism. I shouldn't have defended him. And I regret any of the pain that I may have caused you. Okay, so yes, that was a genuine apology non-verbally. Once again, it had those same sorts of tones that I mentioned with James Charles's side, like when she apologized to him. It had a, a lot of emotion. I don't know how Tati is usually. She could be an extremely emotive person. So this sort of display of emotion could be very genuine. It could also be caused by psychological stress or strain. To me, it sticks out as suspicious to have that level of emotion during a reading of a script, especially a script that's been obviously pre-prepared and edited by a team. So for me, I would view it personally as perhaps suspicious. If anything, I would just keep it in my mind somewhere to be able to refer to later if something else pops up. That's where I'm at with this. Let's keep watching this here. One thing that he did that did concern me a lot was how he would frequently comment about how much dirt he held on other brand owners and members of our YouTube community. I believe that he actually held blackmail material on many people and was capable of destroying the entire community. All right, she had a certain adamantium tone to her voice, a certain harshness, hardness to it that usually is attributed to somebody who is upset or angry about a situation. And that lines up well with what she's talking about with Jeffrey having blackmail material dirt on people. I don't know this for sure, but I have seen it in comments of specifically the video that I did on his apology or explanation video that he does have dirt on people. So that would make sense that her nonverbal communication would line up on that situation. So that's just kind of an affirmation that our baseline that we've established with her is accurate and the positive and negative spikes that we see from it are actually true. So that's good to know. We'll just keep plugging on from here. Back in 2019, Jeffrey started talking a lot more crap about James Charles than usual. It seemed that doing so had become his biggest obsession. It started with him telling me right before filming our collab together for James Charles's channel that James Charles actually didn't want me there, that he had wanted Nikki tutorials instead, but said he had had my back. Things further escalated at my birthday. Every time James Charles' back was turned, Jeffrey would tell me that James Charles was out of control. I initially dismissed it as jealousy because James Charles' career was on a rocket ship at the time. But as the weeks went by, every time I saw or spoke with Jeffrey, it seemed to me that James was all he wanted to talk about. There was a little bit of snootiness that you could see there towards Jeffrey during these sorts of situations where she's talking about Jeffrey's response to James and you can see just a little bit of attitude leak forth on her face. That is what it is. The crying in this area felt, felt a little bit more forced to me. I can't explain as to why that is non-verbally though, so I really am trying not to take that as worth anything. She does have a little bit of disgust towards Jeffrey's handling of James Charles in all of this. That's what her face is saying. That's what her micro expressions and non-verbals are saying. Let's keep watching. Shane came over one afternoon in April and I opened up and shared things that I've only shared with my closest of friends. I shared that I had been the victim of sexual assault. He pledged his unending friendship and loyal to me forever in this life and in the next one. But I thought to myself, why would Shane Dawson, the king of truth on YouTube, be turning against James Charles unless these things he was saying were true? Why would Shane sit in my home and spend so many hours telling me these horrific allegations if they were not true? Shane said that James Charles was a monster and that James Charles was hurting minors. Shane said he was planning to interview victims for the docu-series. He told me that something needed to be done to stop him from hurting more people. Eventually, I started believing what they were saying because they said they had evidence. Shane Dawson didn't just know about my Bi Sister video. He offered to help edit it. He even offered to design the thumbnail and help title it. First, uh, sorry for how much this video jumps around. It really is leaving large gaps of the original video out, but there are some things that I'll refer to that you can kind of see brief blips of before. When she's talking about being assaulted, her nonverbal communication is very synchronized with what her, 
her verbal communication is saying, which is an indicator that that did happen. And that is usually a fairly painful topic for a person who's been through that sort of situation in life. So that is truth and what she's saying there. Because this is being read through a script, it was hard to see if she was trying to mask anything else there. But let's go ahead and continue watching here. There's not too much left of this summary. The night before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain in their voice. The audio was clearly a small portion of a larger conversation. It wasn't enough for me to contact the authorities. It was enough to scare me. As a victim of abuse myself, I know how terrifying it is to think of facing public humiliation and legal proceedings. It was not my place to contact authorities or the alleged victim. And I made no mention of it in my video. Okay, that was fairly true once again, and she's right. For people in those sorts of situations, the last thing you want to do is bring more eyes to it. So my heart goes out to the people that have been in situations like that. I know many of them personally. So that pain that she's showing there is accurate. It is true. That is pain that she did feel. If you were curious, she's telling the truth on that part. Let's keep watching here. The last time I spoke with either Jeffrey or Shane on the phone was the night before Jeffrey's Never doing this again video. Never Shane saw never it. reached out to check on me. And he never shared the trailer with me. The last time we spoke on the phone was before Jeffrey's apology video. And I asked him to not include the drama in the series. Okay, real quick here. That would be frustrating to have your friend to not reach out to you in a situation like this, but I don't know that it would warrant that level of emotion. So this is another one of those areas that I am keeping in mind as I continue reading her nonverbal communication to be able to just notice if she is using tears as a manipulator so that I can be aware of it and not be manipulated by it throughout the rest of the read. It is suspicious to me, but once again, this could all be explained by an overt amount of stress on psychological tension in her. It allows a person to have much larger and more intense fluctuations of emotion. He only texted me after the trailer was live with an audio message telling me to not worry about it. The drama was only gonna be one episode. James Charles was not their only intended target. I believe that there are many different people who have unclean hands in all of this. And there was a coordinated plan to keep me quiet and push me out of the way for other business reasons. I do not think it's a coincidence that Morphe is about to launch their own brand of hair, skin, nail, gummy vitamins. I do not think it was just Shane and Jeffrey that stood to benefit from my being silenced. This is just kind of, once again, one of those statements that she's read. I think the video is over from here. Yeah, okay, so the video is over from here on this little short analysis. For those of you who are curious, in the rest of the video, she has moments of actual intense and true emotion, and you could see it largely in the activity of her eyebrows being in sync with the lower half of her face. There are other areas where she has some more of that seemingly forced emotion or over-the-top emotion. It might be based in true feelings, but it seems to be amplified for effect of the video. All in all, if I were to summarize this non-verbally from Tati's video, you get a sense non-verbally that she is more genuine and more heartfelt than Jeffrey is. However, you get the sense that she might be forcing it a little bit as well in order to perhaps even appear as the polar opposite of Jeffrey. And Jeffrey acting more saucy towards Tati in general. In his video, it makes sense because of her alternate style of manipulation, which I do feel exists. But that being said, neither of these two videos ever should excuse the other out. Uh, during an apology video, during an apology to anyone in general, it's important to be able to be there for the person you're apologizing to, be that a crowd, be that an individual. And with both of these videos, they both apologize to crowds and individuals. Tati seemed more genuine, Jeffrey seemed more fake. Both of them were scripted, which means that all in all, the read was gonna be a little uh, difficult and sparse anyways. 
but that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you appreciated it. If you do, go ahead and hit the like button. Like I said before, if this video hits 1500 likes or more, I'll also go ahead and analyze Shane Dawson's part of this as well. Thank you so much for watching this. That's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Thank you